Hello, good evening everyone. Um, it's Thursday again and we have our Facebook Live on delegation and prioritization. So again, uh, I think it's just on my iPad. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> All right. Anyway, everyone, let's repeat that. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Uh, welcome to our Facebook Live again. It's Thursday. It's Mr. Alan Matus and I am your nurse educator. I have been teaching nurses for almost 25 years and um, also currently I am a nursing faculty. So I help nurses pass their NCLEX and also pass the nursing program as well. So thank you very much everyone for being here tonight. So we have prepared some questions for you that you will like, especially prioritization. So we have three prioritization questions and then we have one delegation question. I think that uh, in the NCLEX, uh, you've been doing very well in uh, regarding delegation questions. However, we focus on prioritization questions, especially uh, some of the hot topics that we have in the NCLEX. So we'll be discussing them tonight, definitely. So before we start, everybody, I would like to uh, welcome a few people who came in here very early tonight. So we have um, we have Leia Aquino Fernandez, Galina Neketen. Ko is watching. Uh, Menchi, hi. Uh, Menchi is uh, one of our students in the academy and thank you for being here again tonight. Uh, we also have Lolita Johnson, Clara Enne, uh, Dari Lawal, Ron Lim, Pratiksa Patel. Hi Pratiksa, how are you doing? We also have Uche, Niriza Ran Capero, Sandy Fico, uh, Katleya Espirito, and um, of course, Brazil Pass also. So thank you very much everybody for being here. Although from now on, um, our Facebook Live will be somewhere around 7, 8 or 9 p.m. Most usually it's gonna be somewhere around 8 or 9 p.m. Okay, because uh, preparing the questions is not that easy. So we, we wanna make sure that we have the best questions for you every night, okay? So just wait for our announcements every Thursday. It's gonna be somewhere 7, 8 or 9 p.m. Okay, but more likely 8 to 9 p.m. guys. Okay, all right, now, also, one thing before you, uh, I forget everyone, I would like to tell everybody that I'm also an author of a an NCLEX review book. Okay. So this is a book that I published in Amazon and it's also now available in the Philippines. The name of the book is Simple, Fast and Easy NCLEX Review. And it's available in the Philippines. You can email matusnursingreviewacademy at gmail.com. So if you want to review your content, content, in a simple, fast, and easy way, then this is the book for you guys. And it has, uh, until now, uh, five stars in Amazon. And uh, for those of you guys uh, in the comment section, if you can do a shout out, uh, if you have my book, I would appreciate that everybody, okay? So it's an awesome book, everybody. So get the copy of the book, all right? Okay. Another one, our next agenda for tonight will be our testimonial. So I'm really very happy because we have a couple of students who passed recently their licensure examination. So we have this uh, um, testimonial from one of our students, Philomena. So she said, I am an LPN. I went to school for my RNBSN. I have written RN exams three times. I did not pass. I was so depressed. I wanted to give up writing the NCLEX RN. I bought the whole package of Matus Nursing Review last year, June 2020. I keep going through his book and online lectures, especially Facebook priorities, prioritizing. He keeps saying we should know our content before you answer NCLEX questions. I follow all of his instructions also and uh, used you world. And I passed my RN exam last April 27, 2021. Thank you, Mr. Matus, for your help. So congratulations to our student for passing this NCLEX. And of course, for a very nice testimony. And of course, everyone, you should remember that you should never give up on your dreams because NCLEX is just around the corner, okay? It's just really trying to find the right resources and the right preparation for the NCLEX examination, okay? So just remember that everybody, it's not gonna be easy, but it's gonna be worth it. And of course, it is possible for everyone as long as you put the effort and get inspired and motivated to open your books and then study for the NCLEX. Of course, you've seen various resources, of course, okay? All right, so another one, of course, for tonight, everybody, I know that all of you are waiting, okay, for a free 90-day online access and quest review. So we have the raffle again for tonight. 
and for tonight uh those who makes a comment in the comment section will win a free 90 day online access and quest review so stay over immediately after this show we're going to announce the winner immediately okay so stay put because you may be the one who will win the program okay so Dwayne said have the hard copy and e-copy it's a great resource got me motivated thank you very much Dwayne one of our most motivated students of course in the online academy studying as well okay and then also we have Manoe Oscar hello Mr. Matus I want to say thank you for your show it helps me to pass NCLEX and now I'm officially an RN so thank you very much Manoe that even in that in this program it's helping you out i'm really very happy about that thank you now we always say that in the nclex there's always prioritization delegation but always remember that nclex is anything under the sun you'll be given questions based on the test plan but in terms of the content sometimes you don't have a lot of prioritization sometimes you don't have a lot of delegation questions okay and that's a challenge in the nclex so i always tell students that when you take your NCLEX exam, your preparation should be that you cannot be a walking encyclopedia. However, you need to know as many information as you can, especially information that brand new nurses should know because you could be asked anything. So before you know it, maybe you will have more side questions or maybe you have more fundamentals question. And that's why a comprehensive program is really very important. You don't jump from one topic to another, but you learn as many information as you can, especially the basic concepts okay all right so that's all about it okay and of course everybody before you forget i would like to request everybody to uh, share this facebook live or if you're watching in youtube then you can subscribe and to get more updates everybody so please share so that your friends will also benefit from this program the more people joining the program, of course, the more that we spread the word and the more that we can be able to help nurses, especially understanding of prioritization and delegation, of course, okay? I know that in the NCLEX, you still have more content, you still have your doses calculation, you still have a lot of those things, but I hope in my little way, I'm helping you uh, overcome your weakness, you know, or your challenge in answering prioritization delegation questions, okay? All right. So I would like to find out if everybody is ready for tonight. Okay. So Clara said comprehensive program like your academy. I like it. So thank you very much, Clara. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So a few shout out. Okay. So thank you very much for those who just came in. We have Riza, our student also who is an LPN now and reviewing for the RN. Thank you, Riza, for being here tonight. And also we have Solomon Joy. Um, my classmate Arnell is also watching tonight. Arnell Tadiake. So Thank you very much also for being here. Yoshika Singh, thank you very much also. Okay. All right. So we'll have our first question for tonight. Without further ado, everybody, I'll share my slide. Okay. Let's have the first prioritization question. Okay. So the first one is we have four clients. The nurse is assigned to care for four clients in the medical surgical unit. Which client should be assessed first? A, the 48-year-old client with hyponatremia who has weakness and confusion. B, the 36-year-old client who has slurred speech and incoordination due to alcohol intoxication. C, the 64-year-old client who appears pale and has dry skin due to end-stage renal disease. Or letter D, the 25-year-old client who has an abdominal hernia that cannot be pushed back manually. Okay, again, the nurse is assigned to care for four clients in the medical surgical unit. Which client should be assessed first? A, the 48-year-old client with hyponatremia who has witness and confusion. B, the 36-year-old client who has slurred speech and incoordination due to alcohol intoxication. C, the 64-year-old client who appears pale and has dry skin due to end-stage renal disease. And letter D, the 25-year-old client who has abdominal hernia that cannot be pushed back manually. Okay, so what will be the best answer to this question, everyone? Okay, all right, let's see everybody's answer to this question. 
All right, so we're starting off with a question that I think everybody finds very easy. Let's see if your answer is correct, or you might be surprised with the answer, everyone. All right, so I would like also to give a shout out to the following people. Okay, so we have, um, okay, Cynthia CJ, we have that, okay. We have uh, Abinemi Sola, okay, Camille and Pangilin and also. So let's have the answer to the first question, everyone. I think everybody has put their answers, okay? All right, so in this question, everybody, um, I think the uh, question is very direct to the point, and that's what you get sometimes in the NCLEX, especially if you're beginning the exam. What is the mechanics of the computerized adaptive test in your NCLEX? You will be given easy questions, and then the questions becomes more, much more uh, difficult to everybody, okay? So in this question, let's see if everybody got the right answer. The answer to the question, everyone, is going to be letter A. Now, letter A is the answer. Now, what is the rationale for the answer? Why is it letter A, everyone? Sometimes it's not enough to know the answer, but you have to find out or you have to understand or to really explain why is letter A the answer to this question. So why do you think is A the correct answer to this question, everybody? Okay. Now, let's raise the answer because when you have hyponatremia, especially severe hyponatremia, that leads to weakness and also your confusion. Now, confusion here, the fact that you have a change in the level of consciousness like confusion, hyponatremia may be causing this patient to have delirium you know, a change in the level of confusion. In the NCLEX, whenever your patient has a neurological change, especially level of consciousness, that is a very serious situation, everyone. Again, I will repeat that. If your patient has a change in the level of consciousness, that is one of the most important signs that your patient is not stable. So aside from your airway, breathing and circulation, your change in the level of consciousness is something you really have to look at okay so a could be delirium and then if you're going to be asking the NCLEX what's the difference between what's the difference between delirium and your dementia everyone so remember that your delirium is something that is sudden something that is reversible and something that is caused by physical uh, causes you know physical causes or organic causes it could be metabolic uh, disturbances, uh, fluid and electrolyte imbalances, dehydration, uh, drug abuse or drug intoxication. So again, the key word is when you say delirium, it is something that is reversible. It is different from dementia because your dementia is progressive and permanent and it is a neurologic disorder. Your delirium is characterized by sudden hallucinations, uh, disorientation, um, agitation, so those are some of the signs of your delirium, everyone. So be aware of that because even in hospitals, we have to really educate our nurses how to deal and identify early the signs of delirium because our patients are prone to delirium if they are having, uh, of course, uh, if they're having uh, uh, diseases or uh, imbalances. So they're prone to delirium, everyone, okay? Now your letter B, of course, your slurred speech and incoordination, those are signs of alcohol intoxication. So that would be expected, okay? Now your letter C, 64-year-old um, client who appears pale and has dry skin, those are expected as well in end-stage renal disease. Although I will tell you, your letter B is something that we have to look at as well because your letter B is alcohol intoxication, incoordination. So we have to make sure that the patient is also safe. We need to institute or initiate fall precaution for that, okay? Now your letter D, 25-year-old uh, with a hernia that cannot be pushed back, um, that is not really an emergency because we have several types of hernia. We have your reducible hernia, irreducible hernia, and the strangulated hernia. The strangulated hernia is the one that is an emergency because it's when your intestines are twisted and the blood supply is cut off. So that is the priority, strangulated hernia. But irre uh, irreducible or incarcerated hernia that, can be, that cannot be pushed back manually through the opening in the abdomen, that is going to be uh, not really an emergency at this time. So the answer is going to be letter A for this, everybody, okay? All right, so I have a question. Do I have a question back from my program? We do not have 5,000 questions in our NCLEX Academy. 
but we do have um, uh, uh, nicely organized quizzes. So for every uh, lectures, there will be short quizzes at the end of every lecture. So we have hundreds of quizzes in the online NCLEX Academy for every system, for every topic, there's always quizzes for that, okay? But we don't have 5,000 <laughs> questions, of course, definitely, because other students, of course, use other Cubans as well. But all the recordings of the Facebook Live, all of these videos, and we have 53 or 54 sessions now, uh, all of those are in the online academy. So you can watch them without commercial. You can make comments as well. And just the Facebook Live alone, we have a total of almost more than 200 questions more than 200 questions being explained in the video that would be uh, uh, delegation prioritization questions. So all of these are online also, okay? All right, so thank you very much for that. Now let's go to number two, everyone. Let's have your next prioritization question. So we have four patients, okay? All right, so we have the following. After receiving a report on the following clients, which one should the nurse assess first? A, the 37-year-old client with stage 4 right foot ulcer, who has a temperature of 38.5 degrees centigrade. B, the 28-year-old client who is receiving intravenous antibiotics due to a WBC count of 11,000. C, the 58-year-old client with systolic heart failure, who has an injection fraction of 38%. D, the 65-year-old client with Parkinson's disease who continues to have leg tremors while sitting. Okay. Let's proceed. I'll repeat the question again. After receiving a report on the following clients, which one should the nurse assess first? A. The 37-year-old client with stage 4 right foot ulcer who has a temperature of 38.5 degrees centigrade. B. The 28-year-old client who is receiving intravenous antibiotics due to a WBC count of 11,000. C. The 58-year-old client with systolic heart failure who has an ejection fraction of 38 degrees, uh, 38%. Or letter D. The... Uh, 65 year old client with Parkinson's disease who continues to have leg tremors while sitting. Okay. What is the priority in this situation, everyone? What is the priority in this question? So read the question A, B, C, and D. Okay. What's the answer, everybody? All right, is it A, B, C, or D? So again, is it someone with the right foot ulcer with a temperature of 38.8 or 38.5? Okay, uh, someone with 11,000 WBC, okay. All right, receiving antibiotics. Is it someone with an ejection fracture, a fraction of below of uh, 38% only, okay. All right, what's the answer everyone? 65 year old with Parkinson's disease. What's the answer everybody? Okay. All right, so I'll give a shout out to some of the people. So kind of like give, uh, give also your uh, you're rational for the answer, guys. Okay. So we have uh, Galina, Nikitenko. Thank you for being here also for tonight. Leia also. Okay. Glenn Iniba also. Thank you for being here. All right. So the answer for this question, everyone. Okay. What do you think is the answer? Okay. Who comes first in this situation, everybody? Okay. Who comes first? All right, so I think all of you have the answer already. The answer is going to be letter. Okay, so the answer everyone is going to be letter. Be very careful with your answer, everybody. Okay, so the answer is going to be letter. Okay, so the answer is going to be letter A. All right, so letter A is the answer everyone. 
it's not letter C. So most of you answered letter C. Okay. All right. So the answer is letter C. Why is letter C the answer, everyone? Because you have a stage four right foot ulcer, so meaning that the bones are exposed. Uh, your letter A. Uh, this patient is more prone to develop infection because of the fact that you have a stage four foot ulcer. This patient can develop osteomyelitis or infection of the wound. And having a temperature of 38.5 degrees centigrade indicates the, indicates the presence of fever. Okay, so fever is a, uh, something that we have to look into with someone who has a stage four right foot ulcer. Okay, because of the danger of sepsis, everyone. So fever. Now your letter B is not a priority. Why? Because this patient has infection. However, this patient is already receiving intravenous antibiotics. So you're good with that. Your letter C is someone with heart failure who has an ejection fraction of 38%. The fact that the patient has 38% ejection fraction, that's part of the diagnosis. That's the reason why the patient has heart failure because the, uh, the ejection fraction is below 40%. You know, when the ejection fraction is below 40%, that uh, ejection fraction is below 40%, then that's the reason why the patient has been diagnosed with heart failure in the first place. Okay, so that's part of the disease process, having an ejection fraction which is below 40%, okay, which is a sign, of course, of heart failure, okay. So that's why the answer is letter A. Why? Because the patient is, is having fever. Okay. So fever and one of the challenges that we have in a hospital is of course, training nurses on how to really identify early signs of sepsis. You know, we have to train nurses on how to identify signs of early signs of sepsis, such as for example, uh, low blood pressure, you have fever, of course, and then also, aside from fever, low blood pressure, you have tachycardia, okay? Now, between A and C, because most of you answered there is C, you have to look at letter everyone, that is fever. And I've always uh, told you in this, uh, in this uh, prioritization, you know, you have airway, breathing, and circulation as priorities. You have a change in the level of consciousness, but don't forget, risk for infection or infection is something that we need to really take care of as well, okay? because infection can lead to sepsis, you know, or generalized infection, and that could be dangerous for your patient. Okay, especially the fact that this patient has a stage four right foot ulcer that is an open wound. You know what stage four is, right? So that's really exposing the bones, and of course, uh, bacterial infection can happen. Okay, all right. So just a lesson learned, everyone. Okay, now your letter C, your patient has heart failure, okay? And the fact that 38% is ejection fraction. Now, if letter C has other symptoms, like for example, letter C patient has shortness of breath, then letter C comes first because shortness of breath or if your patient has circulation problem, that comes first, of course, especially if airway is the issue for letter C, okay? All right, so the answer is letter A. Don't forget fever. And one of the worst things that we can do or one of the worst things that can happen is when we ignore signs of infections. Why? Because our patients could be immunosuppressed, they could have poor immune system, and infection can really happen if we delay that. So always remember, one of the most important competencies that nurses should have is really the, the ability to identify signs of sepsis and intervene immediately. Okay? All right. If you Google in the internet, you know, if you search in the internet about sepsis, there are many national programs and projects emphasizing the ability of nurses to manage sepsis. So try that everyone. You can see that in the CDC. You can see that in a lot of programs. There's even a dedicated website just for sepsis alone. Okay, because that's one of the most common causes also of mortality among our frail patients. All right, so let's go to number three, everyone. Okay. All right, so in the NCLEX also remember what are the normal um, finding or normal values for ejection fraction, okay? So the question is, the nurse performs morning rounds in the psychiatric unit, which client should be seen first? A, 
The 48-7-year-old client with paranoid schizophrenia who refused breakfast thinking that the food is poison. B. The 45-year-old client with bipolar disorder who develops weakness and diarrhea while receiving lithium. There is C. The 38-year-old client with major depression who complains that the medications are not helping to feel better. D. The 55-year-old client with anorexia nervosa who reports that she missed her last menstrual period. Okay, let's repeat the question. The nurse performs morning rounds in the psychiatric unit. Which client should be seen first? A, the 47-year-old client with paranoid schizophrenia who refused breakfast, thinking that the food is poison. B, the 45-year-old client who, with bipolar disorder who develops weakness and diarrhea while receiving lithium. C, the 38-year-old client with major depression who complains that the medications are not helping to feel better. D. The 55-year-old client with anorexia nervosa who reports that she missed her last menstrual period. All right. Now, can you please give the rational for the answers that you have given everyone? So Divina Texon is here. Thank you very much for being here also. Tanpam, Alimat uh, Alimi, thank you very much for being here. Also, we have Abidemi Sola. Okay. So what do you think is the answer, everyone, to this question? Why is it A, B, C, or D? Okay. All right. So the answer to this question, everyone, let's see if you have your final answer, everybody. The answer is going to be letter B. Very good. You all got the right answer. Great. Okay. So I think this is a very easy question. But letter B is the answer because these are signs of mild to moderate lithium toxicity. Okay. These are signs of mild to moderate lithium toxicity, everyone. So what are the signs of lithium toxicity, especially when you have mild toxicity, everybody? So for mild toxicity, or let's say mild to moderate, so you have your diarrhea, you have your abdominal cramps, you're going to have your vomiting also as the signs of mild toxicity. Okay. Uh, aside from that, you have diarrhea, vomiting, fatigue, tremors, muscle weakness, and drowsiness. For severe toxicity with lithium, you're going to have seizures, or convulsions, agitation, slurred speech, uh, tachycardia, uh, low blood pressure, delirium, and coma. Okay, so side effects of lithium in lower doses, these are the side effects of lithium only. Frequent urination is a side effect. It's not an emergency. Okay, um, thirst, hand tremors, dry mouth, restlessness, or constipation. So if the symptoms persist, then of course, they have to be reported to the provider okay all right now your letter a is not the answer because with paranoid schizophrenia missing breakfast is not really that of a big deal um you have to address that as well making sure your patient is nourished your letter c uh someone with depression or complaints and medications are not helping letter c does not indicate any safety issue or suicide issues there so letter c is okay now letter d uh anorexia nervosa um, if they have amenorrhea or they miss their periods, usually those are expected, everybody. Okay. Now, letter B is the answer. But I know it's an easy question, but there's one thing I would like to tell you, everyone. I always tell my students that psychiatric patients are still biological beings, biological patients. So in the NCLEX, when you have psychiatric patients and the psychiatric patient has different needs or, or uh, needs or condition, you always have to prioritize the biologic need of your psychiatric patient. If your patient is having urinary tract infection, we have to address that. If your patient needs a blood transfusion, we address that. Nutrition, we address that. So anything that is physical comes first, even if it's a psychiatric patient, okay? Uh, problem solving, coping mechanisms are usually long-term goals. You know, they cannot be easily corrected. And um, the only time that psychiatric patients are really priorities is when you have safety issues, like for example, um, possible suicide in a patient with major depression. Okay, all right. So thank you very much, everyone, for that uh, for your answers, and I think all of you got the right answer. Congratulations. Okay, lithium is actually a big favorite in the NCLEX. Okay, 
And also remember about your lithium, we always have to tell our patients to make sure that they maintain their intake of salt, okay? Do not suddenly increase or decrease, increase or decrease the salt intake. So study your lithium very well because it's a big favorite in your NCLEX examination, everyone, okay? All right, I'm sorry, but we're down to the last question for tonight, everyone. And this will be your delegation questions, okay? So I'll read the question. Which client, okay, which client can be safely delegated by the registered nurse to the licensed practical nurse or LPN? Okay, now A, the 23-year-old client who is scheduled for x-ray procedure due to flail chest. B, the 55-year-old client with myocardial infarction who is on thrombolytic therapy. C, the 38-year-old client with Crohn's disease who is receiving total parenteral therapy or nutrition therapy. And then, uh, letter D, the 62-year-old client with stroke who requires to fitting administration due to dysphagia. Okay, so again, letter A, B, C, and D. Okay, which client can be safely delegated by the registered nurse to the licensed practical nurse or LPN? A, the 23-year-old client who is scheduled for x-ray procedure due to flail chest. B, the 55-year-old client with myocardial infarction who is on thrombolytic therapy. Or C, the 39-year-old client with Crohn's disease who is receiving total parenteral nutrition therapy. Or letter D, the 62-year-old client with stroke who requires to feeding administration due to dysphagia. All right. I really like also the rationalization of one of our students here. So Yoshika Singh, uh, she said that I really like her explanation about the antidepressants we're in. If the patient complains why the medications are not helping, usually antidepressants or psychiatric medications, the full effect usually is delayed, delayed. And that's why medications may not be helping immediately. Okay, very good for that rational. All right, so who comes first in this situation or who can you delegate actually to the licensed practical nurse? And always remember that when you delegate, you have to choose the most stable patient, am I right? So we have different answers. So some people said C, some people said A, some people said D, okay, so what's the answer for this, everyone? So it has to be a stable patient and also not only stable, but it has to be a patient for in the uh, nursing responsibilities will be within the scope of practice, you know, stable and within the scope of practice. So you really need to know the scope of practice of an LPN. What do LPNs do? You know, that's important. So everyone, it's time to release the answer to the question, okay? So let's see, we have different answers and let's find out the answer everyone's going to be letter D, okay? Letter D everyone, it's not letter A, okay? It's not B, it's not C, it's going to be letter D. Why is it going to be letter D? Because that is someone with a stroke, okay? Who requires tube feeding due to dysphagia. So tube feeding is something that an LPN can do. It's not necessarily feeding your patient by mouth, but this is tube feeding administration. And tube feeding administration is something that an LPN can do. It is being inserted. The fact that tube feeding has been inserted is because the patient has dysphagia. So it's something that the LPN can do, okay? For a patient with stroke, okay? And there's also no indication if this is a new stroke or patient, basically it's just with a stroke patient. But you really have to compare that with the other choices that you have. Number one, you have to choose the the most stable. Okay, the most stable. Now your letter A is uh, letter A is a patient due to flail chest. You have to remember what is flail chest, right? So now you go back to your concept. Flail chest is something that happens when a patient has rib fracture. Okay, so that is uh, an airway issue, a breathing issue. Flail chest indicates your patient is unstable because the chest movements uh, are not symmetrical. So some ribs are falling, some ribs are rising when the patient is breathing. It's asymmetrical. So review your flail chest again, everybody. And why is flail chest, okay, um, 
an indication that your patient is unstable. Okay, so study what is flailed chest. Okay, because it is characterized by paradoxical breathing. All right, which is I usually I also I also explain this in the online academy as well. Will there be the fact that this patient is on thrombolytic therapy? It means that this is something that happened recently. Your MI because your MI requires thrombolytic therapy within a few hours only. I think it's six hours or eight hours. So that patient is unstable. The fact that thrombolytic is being given to dissolve the clot. Okay. So let her see someone with Crohn's disease who is receiving TPN or total parenteral nutrition therapy. Uh, TPN is uh, central line. Okay, central line. So uh, LPNs uh, generally do not take care of patients receiving this TPN. Okay. Um, the management of TPN lines. Okay, maybe in some states, I, I don't know, but then generally uh, not all LPNs will be able to take care of patients with total parenteral nutrition therapy, especially those managing with central line administration. Okay, now your letter D is, of course, within the scope of practice of the LPN and is also a stable patient, although we say it's dysphagia. However, it's not necessarily feeding your patient or it's not a new stroke patient. It's just really too feeding your patient. And that's the reason. Usually the reason why patients will receive tube feeding is because of this feature. So tube feeding administration. So that would be your larity, everyone. Okay. So please, please, everybody, please uh, uh, total your scores, how much you got everybody. And hopefully that you learned something for tonight. And of course, very important, everybody is it's all about practice. Okay. So answer more questions about prioritization and delegation. And hopefully that in my own little way, I'm helping you out answering these questions, everyone. Okay. So, okay. So we have Clara. Clara said, I used to be horrible now because of you. I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you. I cannot thank you enough. Thank you. And then also watch our other videos as well so that you can learn. Okay. All right. Your answers in the NCLEX may not be perfect. You may make mistakes. However, the NCLEX is all about trying to really find out if you have the competency, okay? If you make mistakes in the NCLEX, that's okay. However, you need to be consistently answering difficult questions in order to pass, all right? Okay, so got your over four, okay? Thank you very much, uh, Yoshika, for your comment also. Okay, all right. So there you go, everybody. Before we end for tonight, I would just like to give a short plug-in. Okay, so again, our online NCLEX Academy, it comes with a workbook and the workbook is something that a lot of our students like and we also use the workbook for our Saturday class. Right now we have a Saturday class that is ongoing and we have awesome students. I will see them this Saturday. It's very comprehensive. It is a long day, okay, reviewing all the contents about nursing. If you also review in the online NCLEX Academy, all of the lectures are recorded. So you have a comprehensive and complete and coordinated curriculum from the most basic to the most complicated concepts, okay? From start to finish. You have to know that I teach in a nursing program and one of my specialties is really developing a curriculum to make sure that students are organized when they study. We don't jump from one topic to another, okay? And you, of course, you have a lot of resources okay Quiz, quizzes online and then we also have all the videos there and also our prioritization and delegation of course so you can try the free trial if you want everybody and then also by the end of may so end of may we have probably also the uh, memorial day sale so watch out for that everybody okay all right and of course just a little bit of inspiration for everyone be part of the matus tribe you can have this very nice uh very nice uh, water bottle, everybody can have it. Okay, so just visit our website. Okay, it's very inspirational. Just really thinking positive to pass your licensure examination. Okay, so always surround yourself with people who will support you, who will inspire you, people who will uh, motivate you to pass your NCLEX, everybody. And for last week, let us try to congratulate Vibrant Diane Rose. Okay, so she's a winner last week. And she's really very happy for, okay, for winning our 90-day online NCLEX Academy access. So thank you very much also. And give us a feedback if you're liking the Academy, everyone. I have a lot of students who leave comments there and I answer them immediately. Okay. 
All right, everybody. Thank you very much, everyone. I know that for some of you, it's already late at night, but thank you very much for being here. And again, I'm telling you, do not only watch this video for tonight. Keep on watching the other videos that we have in the past because that will help you really understand all the concepts. Okay? All right. So thank you very much, everybody. I will see you next week and have a great uh, weekend, everyone. So I'll be answering messages in the chat box and stay over because uh, we'll be announcing the winner of the 90-day online anchor classes. Okay? Thank you very much, everybody, and have a nice night.